Okay, so today's lesson is essentially your chapter MA211, a volume and surface area of pyramid cones and spheres. Okay, essentially you'll be learning the formulas for both your surface area and volume for the three different shapes. Okay, firstly, pyramid. Okay. Okay, one thing I want you to think of for pyramid is when you all look at the base, in this case, you have a square base. Okay, that's why you have all these dashes here to show that they are of equal length. Okay, but in questions, they can have a triangular base, a rectangular base. Okay, so do not always take it as it to be a square base. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay, next. Okay, we look at surface area first. Okay, so your total surface area. Okay, if you have to account for your total surface area, essentially, if I open up your pyramid for you, okay, you will look something like this. So this is the square base. Okay, you have the four triangle faces. So essentially, if I ask you to calculate surface area, okay, S times S comes from the area of the square. Then you have four times area of the triangle, half times L times S. Okay, which is the base and the height of the triangle. Okay, this L, uh, okay, is what we call your slant height. Okay, later when I go into the question itself, okay, I'll be, you'll get a better idea of what I mean by slant height. Okay. Okay, next, your volume. Okay, the volume of your pyramid essentially is one third times base area. Okay, so you see in this case, your base either base area itself, okay, they just write base area, they don't write S times S. Okay, because your base area can change at any time based on the shape of the base. Okay, in this case, of course, it will be S times S because it's the square. Okay, your height. Okay, essentially this height is the, if you all draw a line down, okay, a vertical line down uh, from the top or the tip of the pyramid. Okay, this is your height. Okay, I'll label this H here. Okay, this is what we call the height of your pyramid. Okay, then what I want you all to take note is this cross here, uh, this is what we call the, the center of the base itself. Okay, in this is the center of your square, which means if I ask you for this distance here, okay, it is half of S. No, it's half of the length of the square itself. Okay, and that is for pyramid. Okay, next we look at your cone. Okay, your surface area for your cone. Okay, you have two in total that you have to add up. First, it is this shaded region here. Okay, so you all can imagine your party hats. Okay, that the curved part is what we call your curved surface area. Okay, is the formula of our curve is pi r l. Okay, same thing. This l is what we call your slant height as well. Okay, so later when we go through the questions as well, you get a better idea. Okay, but what you want to know is this l represents slant height. Okay, so you see the l is slant height. Okay, then of course you have to take into account the area of this circle here. Okay, that's why you have a pi r square. Okay. That is for your total surface area. Okay, next. Okay, we have your volume of your cone. Okay, so it's just one third times pi r square h. Okay, essentially it's the volume of one third of a cylinder. Okay. Okay, lastly, okay, the new the last thing that is new to you all, okay, your sphere, total surface area of your sphere, as well as your volume of sphere. Okay, so your total surface area of your complete sphere, uh, okay, essentially is all the curved regions of the ball or the sphere itself. Can you imagine? So it's essentially like a marble like that. Okay, it's 4 pi r squared. However, if I ask you for the total surface area of a hemisphere, which means half a sphere. Okay, this is half a sphere. Uh, okay, you can write somewhere. Okay, half a sphere. Okay, so they all know what hemisphere is. Okay, so if you all can imagine for a hemisphere, okay, essentially, it will look, okay, my eye is not very good, but it looks something like this. Okay, so you have half of the curved surface area. That is where this 2 pi r square comes from. Because originally you got 4, right? But now I only have half of it. So it's 4 divided by 2 is uh, 2. Okay, so I get 2 pi r square. Where did this pi r square come from? Same thing. This is the base, which is the exposed area, surface area on the top. Okay, that's why for a hemisphere, you have 2 pi r square plus pi r square. 
Okay, that's for your surface area. Okay, for your volume of your sphere. Okay, you have four third pi r cubed. Okay, so for spheres, uh, area is always r square. Volume is always r cubed. Okay. Okay, then volume of hemisphere obviously is just half, right? So four over three by two. If you do your fractions, you get two third. That's it. Okay, so there's no need for you to remember both. You just need to remember for sphere. Then for hemisphere, it is half of the sphere. Okay, then just take note that for surface area, okay, for hemisphere, there's an the additional pi r square. That's it. Okay. Okay, then for cylinder and prism is something that you all should have already learned in school as well. Okay, so I'll just do a quick recap. Okay, your curved surface area, okay, is 2 pi r h. Okay, total surface area, okay, is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r square because pi r square from the top as well as pi r square from the bottom. Okay, then your volume is just pi r square h. Okay, then for prism, depending on the shape given to you. Okay, obviously the total surface area is sum of all the surfaces of the prism. Okay, so based on the shape, you identify part by part and then sum them up. Okay, then for your volume, it is cross-sectional area times height. 